In the Bible, Mary speaks on four separate occasions. The first time was during the Annunciation. She asks the angel how she, a virgin, could be the mother of God. Later she responds, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your word. The second time was directly after the Annunciation. Mary travels to visit her pregnant cousin Elizabeth and sings the beautiful psalm of praise called the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The third occasion was upon finding Jesus, who had been lost in the temple. Mary admonishes him and says, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And finally, the fourth time, it is in today's gospel. We have the wedding feast at Cana. Mary points out the lack of wine to Jesus. She later instructs the servants, do whatever he tells you. These are profound and powerful words which can easily serve as a foundation of our spiritual lives. And perhaps the single best piece of advice that was ever given in the Bible. Mary is obviously present in other Bible passages besides these four that I've just pointed out to you. And the Catholic Church has always valued the powerful and intimate relationship that she had with her son, Jesus. After all, she was the only one who knew Jesus throughout his entire life, from conception to death and beyond. Most of her words have gone unrecorded, but her unique role in salvation history has never been forgotten. Few things in our lives have more power over us than our mother's expectations. A simple glance in our direction, or a few words perhaps, are enough to get us motivated. A mother's expectations are a powerful thing. When the wine ran low at the wedding feast at Cana, Mary did not tell Jesus what to do. She said four simple words. They have no wine. Then, turning to the servants, she said some more powerful and profound words. Do whatever he tells you. The changing of water to wine is Jesus' first inaugural sign of God's presence here in the world through Jesus. This was another epiphany. It was the manifestation of the Lord Jesus at the beginning of his public life. In John's Gospel, the miracles, which he refers to as signs, were meant as manifestations or epiphanies, revelations, through which people came to believe in the Lord Jesus. Incredibly then, upon Mary's very words, the first miracle of our Savior occurred. Such is the power of a mother's expectation. No matter what you face in life, my friends, our Blessed Mother and her Divine Son are inviting each one of you into this glorious command of love and obedience. They are exhorting you to stay faithful through all struggles, in good times, in difficult ones, through pain, and through joy. Her voice rings out over the centuries. The servant's example of obedience transcends water turning into wine at the wedding feast. When we do what Jesus tells us to do, even if we don't understand why he asks it, we get to see God's glory. The story about the wedding feast in Cana is about Jesus doing greater things, better things 
than we can do or even imagine. Let us do what he tells us to do.